All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to prove a test that is integral to your understanding of series, the integral test. And essentially what it says is that if the integral of f is infinity, then your series is infinite as well. So today we'll do part one and we'll do part two in the next video. So suppose f is a non-negative function and is decreasing. So think for instance, one over x. So that is f of x. Then if the integral from one to infinity of f of x is infinity, in other words, if the area under f from one to infinity is infinite, then the corresponding series is infinite as well then the sum from 1 to infinity of f of n is infinite. Let me do an example to illustrate what I mean. For instance, consider the function f of x equals 1 over x. Then, first of all, let's calculate the integral. Then the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx well, we haven't really done improper integrals yet, so let's just be a bit hand-wavy. An antiderivative is ln of absolute value of x from 1 to infinity, and that gives you ln of infinity minus ln of 1, and that's infinite. Therefore, because this integral is infinity, it follows that the corresponding series, so the sum, from 1 to infinity, not of, not of 1 over x, so not of f of x, but of 1 over n. So f of n is infinity. And therefore, the uh, harmonic series diverges, if you'd like. All right, and now let's prove the integral test, and I'll do something slightly embarrassing. I'll do a proof by example. So I will just prove that the series of 1 over n is infinity. However, not a huge loss of generality. In what follows, just replace uh, 1 over x with f of x, and you get actually the proof of the integral test. All right, so as I said, let's do the proof in the special case where we have 1 over x. So proof in the special case. f of x equals 1 over x. But again, it's not so special because for the general proof, just replace 1 over x with f, and then you get the proof in the general case. Now, how do you prove that the series converges or diverges? Well, you would usually have to look at the partial sums. So look at the partial sums. Sums Sn, which if you want, it's the sum from k from 1 to n of 1 over k, which is just 1 plus 1 half plus dot 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 plus 1 over n. All right, and now the idea is, is to interpret this sum in terms of areas of rectangles, and in particular, to compare it with the area under the graph of your function, which is just the integral. And so in particular, consider again our function f of x, which is 1 over x. And let's consider the following rectangles. So the first one is the rectangle with base 1, 2 and height 1. So this height here is 1, which is f of 1. Then what is the area of that rectangle? Well, the base is 1. The height is 1, so the area is 1. All right, then let's continue. Let's now consider the rectangle with base 2, 3 and height 1 half. Then the area is 1 times 1 half, which is 1 half. and so on and so forth. Then you can consider the next rectangle, so the third one that has 
base one and height one third and therefore area one third. Well, and let's continue that way. So how do we get one over n? Well, the third rectangle had area one third. So the nth rectangle, which is, uh, if you'd like, uh, of base n comma n plus one and height one over n, that has area one over n. And so you just continue like that with smaller and smaller rectangles. And then what you get is the areas of each rectangle. Now, what is one plus one half up to one over n? Well, it's precisely the sum of the areas of each rectangle. So sum of areas of the n rectangles. And by the way, notice here we're actually doing a left point approximation because we're always picking the left point of your function. And in particular, let's compare the areas of the rectangle with the area under the graph of the function. Well, notice the rectangles actually cover the function in some sense. So the area of the graph of the function, which is this thing here, well notice it is smaller than the sum of the areas of the rectangles. So in other words, the areas of the rectangles are actually bigger than the area of the function. So area under f, from 1 to n plus 1. And in fact, this follows because the function is decreasing, because let's say you consider a generic k comma k plus 1, then the function is decreasing, which means that f of k is bigger than any other value of f in that rectangle. And in particular, uh, the rectangle width height f of k, which is 1 over k, and base 1 is smaller than the area under the function from k to k plus 1. And then you just add everything up. So, in particular, what do we get? We get Sn is bigger than the area of f from 1 to n plus 1. But by definition, this is just the integral from 1 to n plus 1 of f of x dx. And the idea is because this blows up, it follows that our partial sums blow up as well. So therefore, hence, Sn is greater or equal to Tn, where Tn is just the integral from 1 to n plus 1 of f of x dx. However, what is the limit as n goes to infinity of tn, well, it's just the improper integral. So, but limit n goes to infinity of tn, that is the limit as n goes to infinity of this thing of 1 to n plus 1 of f of x dx. And that just becomes the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. But by assumption, we know this is infinity. Therefore, the smaller sequence goes to infinity, so the bigger sequence goes to infinity as well. Hence, hence by comparison, The limit as n goes to infinity of Sn is infinity, but what is that limit? Remember what is a series, it is literally the limit of those partial sums. So what we get is the sum from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over n equals infinity. So that was the proof in this case of the integral test. 
and we will prove the next part in the next video but let me just give you a quick corollary about um what's called um, the p series so if you'd like corollary so if uh, p is less than or equal to one then the p series diverges so sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the p is infinity. So for instance, with p equals 1 half, we get that the sum from n from 1 to infinity of 1 over square root of n diverges. And to prove this, you could simply reuse the integral test, but there is actually an easier way of doing this. So proof. If a p is less than or equal to 1, then notice that n to the p is actually less than or equal to n, since n equals 1, is greater or equal to 1. So in other words, square root of x, for instance, so n to the p might look like that, but it's smaller than n, at least when n is bigger than or equal to 1. So in this region, n is bigger than n to the p. So in particular, what this implies, it implies 1 over n to the p is greater or equal to 1 over n. But the point is, this series diverges. Therefore, this series diverges. So since the sum of 1 over n is infinity by comparison, the sum of uh, 1 over n to the p is infinity. And then we're done. All right, thank you very much.